he wants to jump. 1,000 cars. Sir, you have a 1,000 cars. I don't think I'd attempt to try this stunt. Or we, we owe this horsepower to Uncle Sam. <laughs> Too many car. car. You know, roses would be... Uh... Like, I put my beer belly on it. Yeah. You can't immediately tell somebody how many cars you have. You'll really give those uppity yuppies something to think about. Stay on the bar. Don't go yeah. off the bar with your Bronco. 1980 Volvo horns. What's right? Me, me. Yeah. Only the man's coolant. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I thought it'd be small. It's for a small car. And I'm like, yeah, but it's, it's still an automatic transmission. They're never going to be light. It's definitely going to have to crash. Starting off with Brad buying another car. That's the West. <laughs> Internet. You know, is this a Nigerian oil print? Uh, I also wish you drove a tan Camry. Anyways, anyway, that, that's a horrible, very horrible podcast content. A very a inside joke. Welcome back to Auto Off Topic. What's up, Brad? Good evening, Andrew. How are you? I'm doing well. Week two of being uh, back at home base. That's right. Uh, and I was happy to learn uh, this morning, uh, like this afternoon or this morning, I was like, oh, NASCAR race is on today. Where are they? I had no idea until I looked it up. They're at the Roval in Charlotte. And I was like, yeah, Sweet. I've been looking, looking forward to it all week. That is one of my favorite races. Yeah. I still... I should really look up how the points work. I have no idea. I don't understand how the playoffs work. The points work. They kept talking about the points change lap to lap too. I'm like, that's too insane. Well, like, I mean, just, they do in the regular season too. And they always have because it's based on your finishing order. So the points are always going to be. So let me try to explain that. No, simply. no, no. So, but yeah. see, that makes sense to me. Your finishing order at the end of the race, your points update. Correct. This, the points were like updating actively, like depending but on where would, they were during the race position. If, if the race ended at that time. Oh, well, that's so confusing. Yeah. Yeah. They're just, you get points for where you're finishing at end of stages. Yes. And end that of makes race. Sense. But what yes. they're showing is if, if the race were to end now, if no positions changed, then X, Y, and Z would be at this many points. And, a, B, and C would be at this many points. They're just, oh, so they're projecting. So basically, if the race ends when the points are, sorry, if the race ends at whatever lap they're at, if no positions change, then what the guys are saying in the commentary booth is, these are who will finish in what order as far as the points go. Not the order of the race. Like today's race, we were talking about um, whose car was behind the wall. Oh, I think Bowman started out like he just didn't start the race. Was that right? Bowman is, yeah, Bowman's not running right now because he's on. Uh, I wanted to say uh, COVID concussion. protocol, but not COVID concussion protocol. No. Yep. Yeah. Concussion protocol. So he's out for two. He's been out for two weeks. So he was not moving on to the next because he's not gathering points. Now, they were still running his car because they can still get manufacturer points and team points for other things at the end of the year that are not playoff related. Those are just end of year, like normal yeah, stuff. We've always done manufacturer bonuses. championships and uh, like crew chief championships and that kind of stuff is different or team championships. So that stuff's all different. So they keep running the car with a backup driver for that. So, but they were talking about like when, Oh, uh, what's his name? Yeah. I can't think of who it was now. There's so many names in NASCAR, 43 drivers a race. So hard to keep track of their names. The one driver was behind the wall and he was like on the cut line, like, Every car that passed him while he was behind the wall, he was losing points. So yeah. once enough cars got behind him, he was like, man, there's no way he's going to be in the championship anymore because he's behind the wall. But they get his car back together. They get it back out on the track and he's running. And so much stuff changed that lo and behold, dude winds up making the playoffs. <laughs> so that's really cool. And the other one was the number five car, Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. Kyle Larson, uh, a favorite to you know win the championship, the returning champion from oh, last he's year. He's out right. now. Yeah. Yeah, he's out because he tapped the wall or tapped on the car. I think he tapped the wall, or he just well, he, he hit the curbs too much. And they were talking about that all race, like yeah, broke. You have to stay off the curbs. You can't do a hundred and some odd laps and hit the curb every lap because you're going to fatigue parts and they're going to break. 
which is what happened. He kept hitting the curbs and he fatigued the upper control arm and snapped the upper control arm and it took them five laps to fix it. So in order for him to get back out there, he was almost going to make it. But then the person who won the race had no chance of being in the playoffs, Christopher Bell, after this race, because it's a cut line race. I'm, I'm going all over the place. It's so, yeah, there's it's like, so every four races is eliminations. Yeah, they're trying to do like uh, Sweet 16, you know, yeah, it's Final like a bracket, eight, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, ex- exactly. So every four race, every four race is elimination. And Christopher Bell, there is no way he would be able to earn enough points to move on to the next round. Kyle Larson lost that five laps and he was like the last car on the cut line. He was going to make it on to the next round. Christopher Bell won the race. If you win a race during that four round race of eliminations, then you're automatically moved on to the next, regardless of points totals. So I know that um, Elliot didn't have to worry about points because he's moving on to the next round, no matter what, because he already won a race during this four races. So Christopher Bell was like, he's like, the only way he can get into the next round of playoffs is to win this race. And he won the race. I'm fast forwarding a little bit here, but it was definitely a interesting finish. All right. That makes a little more sense. Because uh, I know why they did it. Because it's like in the old days, you'd have a driver wrap it up in like September. Ross Chastain. Uh, he was the one who was behind the wall. Yeah. Uh, and then they'd have like, you know. 10 more races, but who yeah, wants and you to were like, <laughs> cool. Who wants to watch this championships already decided. Exactly. So now they do a regular season champion, which would be like your American league champion. You know what I mean? Versus your world series champion. Kind of how it's working. Yeah. So it, it, it's actually, it isn't as confusing as they make it sound, but it certainly um, makes it more interesting at the end of the year. And I'm totally into it because it kind of gives you, so you have like your favorite drivers you have all year round. And then when it gets to the playoff, if your driver's not in the playoff, then you have to like kind of follow a different driver and kind of get into that whole thing. So I was bummed today because Daniel Suarez also got knocked oh out. Oh my God. I was so bummed. So, and he was so far above the cut line when the race started, but he had a similar issue where he slapped the wall and he broke his, um, did he hit the wall? I don't think he hit the yeah, wall. I think no, the, he did. the steering rack just failed. Oh, that's right, too. Daniel Suarez was a steering rack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Sorry. The, the so steering rack happened. just failed. Yeah, the steering rack and failed, it, and he could fall And it failed, behind. like, during the second stage. And then yep. you could see it. The wheel was just, like, shat, like just bouncing. Shattering back hands. and forth, yeah. And you could and see he, it, as, even as he slowed down, he had to do the thing where you put your hand inside the wheel to turn the wheel. So you're like, man, that takes a lot of force. Yeah. I was reminded of, like, driving my 60s Camaro in a parking lot with no power steering. It was that level of like trying to pull on that steering wheel real rough. So that really bummed me out because he wound up being, it looks like, I don't know how many laps down, a lot of laps down by the end. (laughs) And he uh, lost all those points and he was, you know, mid pack going into the race. And if he hadn't had that issue, he would have been fine. But because he finished in 36th, he lost so many points to all the other drivers. So. I mean, silver lining, Kyle Larson is out and neither of us like Kyle Larson. And he had a similar situation where he had a, a you know, a broken car and that's it. You're out. Yeah. So, overall, uh, Trackhouse had a bad day. Trackhouse had a very bad day. Yeah. Their other car they, also uh, had issues. Yeah. No, Chastain is the one that hit the wall, broke the tow link Yep. on the corner exit there and then ended up behind the wall. was dancing around the track. Yeah. It was interesting. He's like, I have no full throttle. The car just dances. And they showed it. It's like, yeah, that's a serious problem. <laughs> you can almost kind of tell because they'll suddenly like sink in the back because they they kind of seem to ride low in the back mm-hmm. the way they're set up. And then they, when they break, they definitely ride lower and the thing toes in or uh, cameras in. Well, there was a race a few races ago where they won. One guy was out there with an issue with that upper control arm and he was bottoming out the whole air on the track. and He started throwing sparks. So they do definitely sink when that when that arm breaks because, you know, it's the upper a frame. So it's holding the top part of the knuckle up. So if it breaks, then yeah, the car's going to sink down. It was interesting so. too. Are we blowing the chicanes? And then to come to a complete stop and flat spotting tires. And yeah, that was interesting. That took out Wallace early. Yeah, it was like, well, yeah, he doesn't have to do the penalty, but he still has to go through the pits. So it doesn't really matter. 
Right. You came to a complete, would, like I would almost not. It, it was almost smarter to not come to a complete stop and just do a see, roll through. I had the same thought and I was trying to find out if he needs to do another roll through. If going to the pits to change a tire doesn't count as his roll through. Because I don't think it does. No, he fully stopped flat Correct. spot of the tires, then had to change the tires. So it was almost like giving yourself a double penalty. So yeah. instead, just don't flat spot your tires, come to a complete stop. Just I slow down. I think and the problem was he flat spotted. Through. He flat spotted the tire going into the turn. I think oh, was yeah. the issue. And then like it, it wasn't like he flat spotted it stopping for the chicane. He he blew the chicane because he locked his tires up. So I don't think he had a choice there to uh, to do that. That was his car was going where his car was going at that point. So yeah, it was it was an interesting race. Um, there wasn't a lot of action going on. It seemed to be a very kind of <laughs> whoever was leading just led the race. And there was no yellows. Yeah, towards until, the end there when uh, the final stage and AJ Allmendinger, you're like, all right. I mean, he's already won here like four times. Yeah, he won yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's just going to get out front and get away from everyone. And then, you know, the last five laps were like insanity. Well, he seemed to have made a mistake on his pit calls. Like he stayed out too long on old tires. So when... um. Chase Elliott came back out with fresh tires. He was he was able to get closer to him. So when he finally did pit, he lost the position that way. And then it looked like Chase Elliott was going to win. And if there hadn't been a yellow flag, that would have been what happened. But the yellow flag happened and it mixed everybody up. So, and then unfortunately, I think it was Busher, maybe uh, Reddick. I don't know. One of them hit the driver. The driver of the eight car. Uh, so that's God. I hate names. I'm terrible with names. Names are always get me every time we do a podcast. Trying to remember names, and I'm like, nope, yeah, can't remember names. The so restart Reddick. was wild. Yeah, every restart was wild. So Reddick spun out Elliot, and that ruined Elliot's chances. And that was definitely a bad, bad move on his part because this race should have been Elliot's at that point. But well, spoken like a true Elliot fan. I like that they were. Well, it was interesting. For the restart, they skip the chicane. Chicane, so they have more speed. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, that seems bad, but well, I think the reason the way it, the track setup is because you, if they didn't wreck on the first corner, they would have wrecked in the chicane going into the restart. I guess. Well, I think the main reason for it is if you have cars starting from the chicane. So the way the restarts work oh, is yeah, the, the lead car starts the restart. Like he, when he goes, everybody in the go. chicane. Right, half the the, pack would be in the chicane or behind the chicane, and the guys in the front would just drive away. Yeah. So I think that's why they do it that way. So everybody can hit the gas at the same time instead of having to wait to get to the chicane and wind up being 25 seconds back. Yeah. So that's that's why they did that. So it was it was definitely an interesting race. Again, I look forward to the the Roval. They run it twice a year now, it seems. Um, and I just it was it wasn't an exciting race like it normally is, which kind of bummed me out. Every road course race this year has been amazing. And this one kind of was like, until the end, it wasn't a great race. <laughs> I could have just turned it on the final stage and been fine. So, not that I want a bunch of crashes, but you want a couple of yellows to like bunch the field back up and, you know, kind of. Are any yellows? There were none. They were just the two for the stage ends. And then until the very end, there was one for debris on the track. And then once everybody was, you know, three laps sprint to the end, it was, everybody was crashing and there were no yellows. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, for the majority of it, I, I typically usually only pay attention to the very last stage. Okay. I'll have the race on, but I might be doing something else in the house. Sure. Because they always do recaps, and then usually stuff gets wild for the last stage. So. Yeah, well, I watched the whole race this time because it was the the road course, and I don't know. <laughs> I did a lot of stuff around here yesterday and earlier today, so I. Deserved, deserved a break, I guess. <laughs> but I, I I still enjoy it. It's still fun to watch the road coursing, road coursing, road course racing. It's fun to see them actually running modern cars now. Like these cars are really good on the road course. Like it's almost like they're designed to be road course cars. The independent suspensions, sequential transmissions, the whole nine. That's all like these are sports cars now. So they're definitely at home on a road course. And I'm, I am 100% here for it. So. Yeah, it's should really be interesting. Good. I think that uh, the championship will be interesting. I think it, I still think it'll be Elliot's, especially now that uh, um, 
Kyle Larson's gone. So Kyle Larson would have been my pick, unfortunately. I didn't like him, but I thought he was going to win. And I wanted Suarez to win. But since Suarez and Larson are out, I think Elliott's going to take the rest of the way. I know. I wanted Suarez to get another road course win. Yeah. Well, if Suarez won a championship, that would have been insane. Mm-hmm. So, but I think it's going to be uh, Elliott again. So we'll take it. Hey, it, it, it can't be Larson. So life is good. So that's right. Oh, moving on from NASCAR stuff, Andrew. Yeah. Anyway, I think there's a local event, level an event you should uh, talk about. There was an event. So yeah. you should join our discord. Yep. Cause that's where we're going to talk about these events. Yep. But we are doing something called the forenoon cup. Sure thing. Just means, uh, early morning. Um, so we're just trying to do like a moving cars and coffee. It's early morning, but it also means it's a throwback, a callback to early Gran Turismo. Because he's first out in Gran Turismo when your first race series is the Sunday Cup. So, yes, the four noon cup has a kind of a callback to the Sunday Cup in Gran Turismo. Right. Although not racing. Nope. So this, I, I would call this the first I official... just didn't want to call it Cars and Coffee. I don't want to call it. Morning Motors is just trying to come up with something that's a little bit different. Well, yeah, because we have other friends that have a Morning Motors event. Cars Morning. and Coffee is also um, copyright vibes event. stuff. Good. Yeah, that's too many. Too, too, <laughs> we waited too long. All the good names are gone. Breakfast <laughs> so we Club. came up with a good one. Yeah, Four yeah. Noon Cup works. I like it. It's different. Nobody else can come up with it. And uh, we'll it's have to make some, some stickers and shirts or something to go along with it. But anyway, it's, I'm, it's I call it our first official auto off topic event. Yeah, so that's the big deal is that uh, to be part of them, you'll have to join the Discord. That's how we're going to let people know. Uh, they'll probably mostly be East and West Coast because that's where you and I are based. And yeah, East I Coast guess, and West, like almost coast. Yeah, Southwest. Yeah, um, West Coast is plenty of events to go to. So this is going to be. There is. Uh, <laughs> there's not, not much West in uh, Arizona, even though there's a lot of good driving roads. There's not much out here if you don't own a supercar. Yeah. So these will not be supercar events, but they will be nope. going out here. Not the weather's getting cooler. It will happen. So we uh, won't always use the same route, but there'll probably be a couple of main routes that we'd use. And suggestions are welcome once you've done them. But the first official event happened. Uh, I'd like to give, I think we need to give special thanks to Scott for hosting the morning. Yep. Because he graciously allowed his uh, front yard to be used. <laughs> Yeah, and at the, at the provided, stylist guy. Yes, provided uh, donuts, I think, for all y'all. Donuts and some coffee. Excellent. Can't beat and, that. Uh, he kind of did, He it was in his uh, area where he lives. So he kind of knew some of the roads. So what happened is in our Discord, uh, Disco Steve um, had, which turns out that's not why he's, his username's like that. I right. thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he had found, I think, or he had it with some old Mazda MX-5 club newsletter or something. It was talking about a couple of routes. There's a lot of scenic roadways out in Western Mass in the Berkshires, uh, just just past Interstate 91, where it intersects the Mass Pike, I-90. You'll know you're there if you're driving in Massachusetts because you stop seeing people and you start seeing dragons. Yes, that's the joke. Yeah. It's out the middle and of the nowhere. outside of the 495 Belt Road here is pretty far out. Dragon country. Um, and it's crazy, right? Because it's I live 10 minutes from the ocean. So to get to where Scott lives is like an hour and a half, two hours, which is sure. far <laughs> to be in the same state, in my opinion. In an East Coast state, Massachusetts yes. is not very big, but yeah, it's very it, wide. It, in an East Coast state, yes, two and a half hour drive should put you in a different state. Unless you're driving, you know, longitudinally across it. Because we normally go up north to New Hampshire because it's actually closer yeah. than you're where... You're in New Hampshire in 25 minutes from your house. Yeah. So anyway, um, a bunch of us... You're in Maine in 40. Like, it's... Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of us East Coasters that are on the Discord. Uh, quite a few of us, actually met up yeah it was a pretty good turnout 10 or 12 people uh good mix of cars you know miata scott stylus uh i took the g20 friend jordan brought his five-speed swapped 850 r wagon 
uh, Scott's friend Tom brought his Dolomite Sprint, which is a super um, cool car. Yeah, Dolomite Spr- Sprite Sprint. Sprint, that right? Sprint. It's Sprint. Yeah, Triumph Dolomite Sprint. Yeah, not a car that was ever officially sold here, but a very cool car. It's kind he of like a it, British BMW 2002. He bought it in Canada and drove it back. It's amazing. I want one now. Um. So yeah, it was really Chris. Chris's RX7. Yep, Chris has his RX7. Of, uh, our other friend Jordan, other other Jordan, brought his family car. He brought his whole family, but his family car happens to be a TRD Camry, which is kind of cool. Yeah, so I haven't seen one like in person. It's a cool color, very cool color. The fastest car there by a long shot. <laughs> this car is like so, three hundred plus horsepower. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of the uh, and then it's you know. Right now, we did it on October 8th, and it was funny. I drove back over the Mass Pike a week before, and all the trees were still pretty green. And now a week later, it's like almost peak foliage. Like Full it was, on foliage. It was gorgeous. Yeah. And we had bright, sunny day. Uh, it was cool, but it was just no clouds. And uh, there's a lot of scenic byways. Like, you'll see the signs. It's like we're on, like route, I think, like 112, 116. I actually got to look at the map, the route map we did, but we went kind of like northwest, then kind of just kind of did a big loop and ended up back towards in the town that Scott lives in and went to a brewery afterwards. Took us most of the day, kind of a little bit longer than what we originally thought, but you know, it's fine. But nobody complained because they were there to drive. Yeah. The idea is that these things will be like half day or three quarter of a day, like, they're probably not going to be like two and three day things. No, not now. at first anyway. Yeah, maybe <laughs> do something in the future. But in the meantime, I think that a, a, a nice a nice day out, you know, you do it on a Saturday. You still have all Sunday to do family stuff. So, yeah. And, you know, the, it was family friendly. So you could bring a friend, uh, family. Yeah. As long as your family doesn't mind driving in your old car or your enthusiast car. It's totally family friendly. No, so. we uh, kept it. It was all speed limit. The roads are really fun. There's a couple, I, I the really touristy part is on the Mohawk trail that we went to. That was that hairpin, the like hairpin, the hairpin. Yep. That's like very famous. So that was kind of busy, but all the other roads are pretty quiet. Yeah, and nobody, uh, nobody crashed. Nobody got arrested. Nobody got tickets. Everything nothing broke. Good. It's very well, good it's funny. There was one road towards the end. We were coming down. It was a quick road anyways. Uh, and Chris was in front of me and we were like 10 over. Okay. But it was Hooligans. wide open. It was a nice road. And uh, like this truck comes the other way and like flashes the high beams. I'm like, oh, maybe they're, oh, nope, that is a police officer. <laughs> the police officer flashed the high beams? Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I guess it's better than the blues. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Just. Maybe there's a cop. A nope, that is the cop. All right. We'll slow <laughs> yeah. down a little bit here, I guess. Very cool. Yeah. yeah I, I was, I had some serious FOMO from the event. I'm going to tell you that. You know, we see all these things and, you know, we'll promote some names. Well, you here. do we, it to us. Yeah, that's true. We'll promote some names here. Like we're friends with the guys over at the DWA podcast and they do their rallies that are two and three days. And we look at those events all the time. Like, man, that looks really fun. And I don't want to say that our event is a ripoff of theirs. It's not. It's just a, another reason to drive a car and have a good you know time with your car. And that's what we're all about. So it's. You know, inspired by events like that, or like you said, the Breakfast Club, or the Good Vibes Breakfast Club, or what's the there's a few other ones out there now. I think actually, uh, Bradley and Myron just started one in Ohio. Yeah, interestingly so, enough. I mean, people have been doing a lot of car drives and cars and coffees for a long time, but so yep, just because they do doesn't mean you can't do one either. But the yeah, exactly. The thing is, a lot of them get too big, and then they're just un- unruly. Sure. And they're just not fun. Yeah, we were trying to think of a people. We were trying to think of a way to gatekeep it without actually gatekeeping it. And pretty much, I think this is the way to do it. It's people who are active in the community, and you know, if if they have a friend they want to bring along who they think would fit in, like the gentleman with the Dolomite Sprint is not in the Discord, but he's good friends with somebody who is, and that's that's okay too. Yep. So I think as long as it's. Uh, Cool folks only. I guess we can uh, get through that. Have a good time with that. So um, I'm encouraged because that was, like I said, that's that's the first official like actual auto off topic event. Um, 
I, I only feel bad because we didn't have any swag kind of ready for it. Uh, I hope you got lots of pictures because I want to see I more gave out and more some pictures. Keychains. Perfect. I actually didn't take too many pictures. I took as many as I could, but you know, you're in the moment. It's hard when you're driving. Stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then my my current worry, right, is if you start doing a big show that's just kind of like in a parking lot, and it's and it's more than like a year, you know, like once a year show that people associate that with takeovers, which sure. they're not. And you just don't want to wrongfully be lumped in with those people that are doing that stuff. So yeah, well, Hey, I mean, the, look that was our other is- idea with this was that you, by keeping it moving, you're not overstaying your welcome anywhere. Sure. I totally agree with that. Well, look what happened to, you know, in, was it New Jersey last couple, last month? You know, no, that we was, don't... well, the, uh, the takeover of the person, people were killed yeah. in an accident, but. But the... it's associated with a car event that was started by legit enthusiasts that was taken over oh, by. Oh, H2O, yeah. Yeah, it was associated with that, even though there is zero official association with H2O and they disbanded the show because it was getting unruly. Yeah, I thought so... you were going to talk about the, the race of gentlemen, but that was. Uh, no, the race of gentlemen was canceled because of weather. It happens to be in the same town that the quote unquote H2O, but not H2O event happened at. They're both in Wildwood, Wildwood, New Jersey. So H2O used to be a car show for water cooled Volkswagens. Right. For those who don't know. And then, you know, it was always, you know, the show was on a Sunday, but people would start showing up to that area on like Thursday night and hang out and cruise the strip. And it was fairly low key. And then as it got more and more popular on the internet and Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and everything, the more and more people showed up and people started showing up on Monday instead of Thursday and people who weren't there for Volkswagen stuff would show up. And then it became, you know, there were different parties up and down the strip and there was drag racing and there was burnouts and there was just lots of unruliness. And it got to the point, I think the last year I went was 2012 because I was like, you know what? I don't think I need to be associated with this anymore. (laughs) So I never went again from 2012 and then there was, you know, kept going, I think until like 18 or so. And then it just stopped because the people there were like, all right, this has gotten too unruly. We can't be associated with this. Something bad's going to happen and we're going to get in trouble. So they stopped it. So the and internet people, was mad. Well, people kept then, going. People just kept showing up. Impounding cars. Yeah. And then it became like a clout chasing to have your car impounded, right? It was like. Sure. Pretty much. And, but then on top of that, what happened is. These people are like, oh, the um, the it was Ocean City, Maryland at the time. It's like, oh, the Ocean City police, you know, they're overstepping their bounds. It's like, no, people are taking over their entire town and causing a disaster. They want you out. Like, it's not a point at this point of the government doing too much here. It's a point of the people pushing too far. And that's why the people who ran H2O ended it because they didn't want to be, you know, associated with it. So anything you saw after that, the H2O show ended. And people would still say, oh, it's H2O weekend. And I bet if you asked a hundred of the people there what the H2O show was or what it meant, they would have no idea that it was a show for air for water cooled Volkswagens. Because it became by you know the year 2020, 2021, as just this full internet takeover that was nothing to do with Volkswagens anymore. And people are probably like, oh, it's on the it's on the water, so it's H2O. Like, no, it's nothing to do with that. Like and this year, they said, all right, well, the Ocean City, Maryland police are doing too much. We can't go without getting tickets. We're going to go somewhere else. So they went somewhere else, and they were very unruly, and more than one person died. And that's what the car scene does not need. I hate using the word car scene. It's not car scene. That's what, the, that's what enthusiasts don't need. We don't need those kind of people sullying our reputation as car people, basically. You know, we just need to do stuff like this where we can have fun with our cars. We're not being unruly. You know, you can still drive your car and have a fun time with it without putting anybody else in danger. And that's kind of what we're trying to encourage this kind of stuff. That's what, you know, all our other friends that are involved with these rallies and these breakfast drives do. They, the positivity, the, the camaraderie, the friendship, it's all we're trying to push here. So screw your takeovers. We're just going to do fun drives and be normal. And we're not going to advertise it heavily on the internet because that brings, that brings the undesirables, right? Seems so, like it. It's going to be a, if you know, you know, kind of deal. Yeah. Like so, I, I went to that thing. I, 
well, I showed up late, but that thing that Larry Chen hosted at that place in California when I was out there, it was a nighttime meet. It was ridiculous. It yep. was like so crazy. So many people, um, so little space, just bad things are going to happen every time. But, um, so, oh yeah. One other cool thing about that was we got to see the Hoosack tunnel, which I'd never seen before. I didn't I've even know it existed. It. I've never seen it. Um, it's a five mile long train tunnel that was dug in 1870. That's very cool. I think it's 1877 over the oh, it's, entrance. It will start yeah. in 1870. Okay. Took up seven years because it was, yeah. it was the 1800s. <laughs> yeah. But I think <laughs> they were saying, and they'll correct us in the discord. I think they were saying it was the first time dynamite was used commercially or nitroglycerin or something. And, uh, a lot of guys died, like almost 200 people died trying to build it. That's a lot of people. That's even more so than it's takeover. Like, supposedly like super haunted. All right. It's 4.75 miles long. Mm-hmm. Work began in 1851. Whoa. And opened in 1875. So maybe that, maybe it's at 1875. No, yeah, it's, it's 1877, 1877 over the entrance. Maybe that's Probably when they when finished like, the the facade or something. Yeah. So, but we stood at the end of it and like, it's just darkness within like 30 feet, just darkness. And yeah. I can't even like imagine what's in there. Damp, like musty smell, but like it's, it's an active tunnel still. They run cargo through it. And I think some other trains cause it goes up towards like Vermont. And there were like yeah. people like hanging out there, like tailgating. I think we were like, they must be waiting for a train to go by so they can just like film it or watch it or whatever they do. Yeah. Train people do that. It's interesting. I mean, yeah. it's no different than car people, I guess, waiting to see cars. Train people want to see trains up, coming out of the we tunnel. We walked right up to the entrance and we're just standing there. And I mean, because you could definitely hear a train coming for a long way away. So, yeah, I'm sure. But these other people oh. that we weren't with, like, just had flashlights. They just walked in there like, okay, they're never coming back. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is there enough room to like stand on the side if a train comes through? Maybe mm-hmm. we were, we were talking about that, like where the entrance of the tunnel was like, there seemed like enough room. You could stand on the side of a train came, but be super scary. But be, I mean, trains lean a bit. So like Andy was saying, uh, it can't be like super tight. Cause if the train keels over a little bit, it would hit the wall, but. It's yeah, going to be like super loud, like super smoky with exhaust and you're just going to be in there. Like it's crazy. Yeah. No, thank you. I don't think I want to go there. If it, if there's if plenty I of YouTube videos schedule. you can watch of people doing it. It's like, I got, I was trying to find one of a train actually going through it, but it's a lot of them of like people going into it, which is weird. Hmm. Maybe if I knew the train schedule and I was assured there would be no, yeah, no train coming through every one thing, but it looks like but it's the, still the sixth longest railroad tunnel in North America. Yeah, for a day. while, like it was like the longest in the world or something. It was the second longest in the world after the Mont Cenis tunnel in the French Alps, which is eight point five miles long. So that was pretty cool to see, and that's very cool. I like to see that. Uh, it's like right next to like this road, and then it was like a super cool road that's right along the river, and then it links up to this other really cool road. Like there's a bunch of cool roads around there. I'll definitely have to do that again. It doesn't say how many people died, but in one incident, 13 men died. In one incident. It just says deadly accidents. Oh, sorry. 196 workers died overall. There you go. 13 men at once at one point. Woof. Yeah, that was one of the Jordans was telling us that was when they were digging the one of the Jordans. shaft. <laughs> The one mile, there's a one mile deep vent shaft, I guess, in the middle of it. Yep. The, the, yep. They had a leaked, uh, naphtha fumes had leaked from a gasometer lamp, ga- gas, yeah, gasometer lamp, and the ex- ensuing explosion set the hoist on fire and collapsed into the shaft. Four men near the top escaped, but 13 men working 164 meters below were trapped by falling pieces of iron. The pumps were destroyed and the shaft filled with water. A worker uh, named Mallory was lowered. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Crazy. Supposedly they built a raft 
so that, so that they thought the guys were dead, but the guys were like survived. So they built like some raft to like float on the water, but then nobody came to get them because they thought they were dead and they just starved to death. <laughs> Oof! So horrendous way to die, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, we were talking about this while we were standing there. We're like, yeah, uh, happy OSHA exists. <laughs> yeah. Several months later, workers reached the shaft's bottom and found that several victims had survived long enough to fashion a raft before suffocating. That's what yeah. happened. Jesus. Suffocating. All right. Yeah. Crazy. Hmm. Yeah. Thank goodness for modern industrial safety laws. Yeah. No. That's not. Uh, that's not. That's not cool. <laughs> But it's neat that it still works because, I mean, at least, you know, all that work was done and it wasn't for not, I guess. I mean, 200 people dying is crazy, but at least it's been in activity now for, you know, well over 100 years. Yeah. So it looks like you were in the east side of it. Yes, we went to the east end. It's in Florida, Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah, we're going through all these town names out here. I'm like, these feel made up. These yeah. aren't real towns. <laughs> well, I love when you're at Western Madison. It's like, oh, I'm out of Salem, where I'm from. Oh, wait, I'm now in New Salem. <laughs> yeah, what happened here? Yeah, or it'll be well, it'll be like a, it'll be like Florida, and then it'll be like Cheshire. It'll be like a England countryside name. Well, that's how it worked out here. Out there, I should say. Everything was just England again, hence New England. So that makes sense. Or it'll be like an old president. So there's like Adams, North Adams. Yeah. Well, actually, North Adams is where the other end of the tunnel is, isn't it? Or is it next to Florida? I think it's next to Florida. It's next to Florida. Yeah. Crazy. Anyway. So, yeah, I'm super excited about the future of auto off topic events and some of these drives. I know wintertime is fast approaching out there. So I don't know if there'll be another one there this year. But uh, we'll have a couple out here. But you okay, good. Go in the Discord to find out. Yeah, there'll be a couple out here, and uh, I need to recruit some more Arizona Discord members because there aren't that many from out here yet. <laughs> so I might have to recruit in a different way. But I have That's fine. Uh, I have a friend out here who is looking to do it as well. So the two of us have brainstormed some ideas, and we will brainstorm some more ideas. And I'd like to think that by next month, November which is kind of the sweet spot here. We can do one that's a bit north of Phoenix before the heavy snows happen up there too. So Cause that's what we have to balance here because in the summertime in Phoenix, it's too hot, but in the wintertime north of Phoenix, it's too cold. So we have that November, December time to do it. So I think, I think there'll be one here pretty soon. I have a, a, a route plan that should take most of a day. So do it. Yep, it's gonna happen. If you're local to here, hit me up. Well, keep me uh, keep me honest here because I'm I'm excited. Honestly, I, I'm super excited how that went down, and I hope that uh, we can do some more in the future. Yep, and maybe we can do it when I'm out there too. Fingers crossed. Um, I have to actually go out there for that. I've been out there for a while. <laughs> yeah, I have a real quick project car update. Sure, hit me. I. I uh... So I think I talked about grabbing the visor for the G20 out of the mm-hmm. junkyard one, but it was the wrong trim color. So I took it apart. I was able to take it all apart. And I figured out by looking at both that the spring on the one I had in my car was actually broken. I couldn't tell before because I didn't have one to look at. Okay. So I just swapped that spring over and now it stays up. So upholstery color doesn't matter because you just swapped the guts. I just swapped the guts. Is so guts. Only guts. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. That's cool. That's like one of those like super minor things that makes a huge improvement in the ownership experience of the car. Yeah, because it falls down to like your forehead. Yep. When you hit a bump. Yep. I have had more than one car that did that. So that's a huge, a huge improvement for sure. So I'm still looking for a driver's side sun visor because I'm assuming the same thing happened for the 1980 Corolla. Because it does not have a driver's side sun visor, and that's quite annoying. But it has like the post where somebody clearly pulled it off, probably for that same reason, if I had to guess. So, need to find one of those. Uh, I don't have many project car updates over here. I fully detailed that Subaru that I bought to uh, to get rid of. So yeah, 
that sh- should be on the market tomorrow. Big thanks to Naomi because she loves doing interiors. And the interior in that car was disgusting. So she helped out a ton by getting that interior. So cleaned. is it black on tan? It's a very light. It's a very light tan interior and a black exterior. Okay. It's black with like the typical blue metal flake, like a Subaru. Ah, uh, okay. They had two different black flakes. There's one on the on the STI, I think, is like a gold flake. Or is it a blue flake? I think it's the same flake, actually. It's like blue and gold it's flake. It's dependent on the year. Okay. So that, what was yours? The 05. That, had, that was black obsidian pearl that had blue in it. Okay, so this is the same color as that. Yeah, it's, the earlier ones had more gold in them. So this is black with a blue flake. Yeah. So it's probably the same same color as yours. So. Oh, did re- uh, the all track. So they replaced a uh, injector. Okay, so it was an injector. Yeah. Well, it's good Which, to know because that was pain in the butt for so long. I dropped it off on a Friday morning, and it was done Friday afternoon. I was like, "Oh, so this is something that happens fairly often." Fairly often, had, yep. Because you had the injector in stock. And this is like, very yeah, different. We've been seeing it a couple times, so. This is very different than my experience at the Volkswagen Service Department. I've had my car for six and a half weeks. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I was like, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm dropping off Friday morning. It's the only time I had. But I was like, I don't need the car. Just if it has to stay over the weekend, no big deal. Just keep it till you fix it. Yep. And it's not always the smartest thing to say. <laughs> well, yeah, but like I understand like if they had figured it out, they might have to order parts. I could either pick of it up. Of course. But like it was just like, don't. I don't want you to rush it either. I want you to just yeah, fix, fix it. it right. So it was cylinder number three, obviously, because that was what had the misfire. Yeah. They said the tech moved the coil. It didn't move the misfire. So it uh, apparently it's the injector. That's what kind of is a pain is that when you first brought it in, they're like, it's just bad gas. Get out of here. Yeah. So at least they uh, stood behind it. I mean, it's obviously a new car. It's in a warranty, so. Yeah, and the thing with the high pressure injectors, they're the openings are a lot smaller, so I guess they mm-hmm. get clogged up. All it takes is a tiny little piece of something. Yeah, I mean, I ran, I did run some nice Lickamoly fuel injector cleaner through it, but that seemed to help a little bit. But maybe it was clogging up some more. I don't know. Too little, too late. It seemed too low a mileage to need a decarb. Yeah, that isn't be that closer like, to like sixty? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it should need walnut blasting around 60,000, which is, I fully expect that to be due. Like, I wasn't, I was going to be really annoyed if they're going to be like, well, it needs a walnut blasting and it has 30,000 miles on it. I'd be like, well, that's really annoying. Cause yeah, you wouldn't think that'd be the case. Yeah, it's like a known service thing at 60K. I knew that buying the car, that that's a normal interval. It's not cheap either, I don't think. Uh, I don't think it's terribly expensive either. It's, it's cheaper to have somebody do it than for me to buy the walnut machine and do it myself. Well, I'd assume so. <laughs> yeah. I would assume so. It was funny though, because the car needs an oil change like 200 miles. And he's like, do you want to do the oil change here? I was like, no. He's like, really? Like, no. <laughs> so I want to go down the street to the Autobahn. Did you tell him? Use Liquid Molly. Yeah, did you tell him why? No. Oh, okay. Oh. I don't need Sir, to this tell car. Him why. This car is cared for better than every other car here. So, got it, my face. Yeah. Leave me alone. So, anyway, excellent. Well, that's good news. I don't have too many project car updates here. I've just been working on that Subaru. I finally cleaned the garage. That was huge. So, I can get some more stuff done. I have to, I have a few projects lined up. So, in the next couple of episodes, I should have some pretty big progress. Uh, I haven't touched the Eclipse since last time we recorded. I haven't touched the car at all, actually. <laughs> it didn't didn't do much this week except for work and clean the black Subaru. So, so I was wondering. I did leave the Eclipse electrical book. I left it on the trunk of the Sporo. Yes, you, you must left have found that. It. You left that, left and you purpose. left the motor manual too. By accident, I left that on purpose as well. Okay, because uh, I don't really need them here. Right. You you can kind of use them on your older cars there. The I was wondering if you look through that book if it has any procedures to test the math. Okay. With with the meter just to see. Okay, I Maybe can try that. the math is going bad. I mean, maybe. 
that usually gives more signs than this, but no, I mean, think about the Q45, the math was going bad, but it would work fine for like a while and then hit a certain like time of driving and then start being weird. Sure. I can look into that then. I didn't think about that, but I'll look into it. Yeah. Check it. It's doesn't, hopefully it doesn't, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to check it if you can. No, I have the multimeter. It's fine. So I will check that. I, I'll make a solemn promise right here in the podcast that by recording next Sunday, uh, I will have at least checked that and replaced the other parts that I replaced initially. With yeah, go the back original to the original parts, ones. Just to see if that makes any changes. So we shall see. Um, yeah. I guess, like I said last week, I'm, I I just, I parked the car this week and didn't touch it because I'm just kind of like, yeah, I needed, I needed a break from it. Let's put it that way. I was like, no, the, can't touch this car the, this week. <laughs> they aren't complicated cars, but it's just annoying because there's a little more involvement to try to diagnose them. You have to want to do it, number one. Yeah. And you have to have some mechanic knowledge in your past. Like, I don't think this would be something for some like person who's never worked on a car to try to figure out. Like, no. I'm glad that I have some experience here. It's like what I had to figure out with the Q45. Like, yeah. it took time and reading the service manual to figure out. It took time and patience, which neither of us have. Yeah. <laughs> I've, 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 the older I've gotten, the more patience I've learned. Let's put it that way. I, I do when it's something I want to work on when it's interesting to me. It was interesting to me to figure out what was wrong with it. Yeah. I don't have patience to do stuff to my house because I don't yeah. like it. Yeah. I, I like the house. Too. I don't like yeah. doing, I don't like doing home improvement stuff. It's I just want to work on cars and houses. Yeah. Yeah. I do it out of necessity to fix yeah. things in the house. Yeah. And it's therefore, not it's not enjoyable. It's not fun. Well, th- I think that the issue with this eclipse too is the car was great until I was like, I'm going to make it my daily. And then like a minute later, it was like, no, nah, I'm going to break. So I haven't really enjoyed it fully as my daily. So, well, that's the other thing too. When you don't need to fix a car that you have to drive every day, the stress level is a lot lower to try to get it fixed. So correct you spend time trying to fix it. Cause it's more of a puzzle exercise. Yeah. The other problem than with that a necessity though- to like, oh my God, I need to get to work tomorrow morning and this car needs to work. Yeah, well, thankfully, everything that you guys have made fun of me for for years, having multiple cars, has uh, saved me from that having to worry about getting to work because if it is broken, <laughs> I need to take something else. <laughs> so Naomi works from home uh, three out of five days. So on those days, I can just drive her car because she doesn't go anywhere in those days. So if I want to. Or I can drive the 944 or the Corolla. It is what it is. So it's nice when you have multiple vintage cars that all have air conditioning. Because that's not something I ever had in the past. So life goes on. Anyway, did I talk last week about the car show? I think I did, right? Yeah, I did. You did. Mind. Okay. I couldn't and remember earlier this week. This coming Sunday, the 17th, is Japanese Car Day at Lars Anderson. Uh, a bunch of us that were at the Forenoon Cup with hey, Japanese cars, most of us are going to go. So I think, yeah, actually, probably just about everybody. Except for a couple yeah, I think people everybody's go. safe for Jordan and Andy will probably be there because Jordan yeah. and Andy don't have Japanese cars. Um, so. I'm going to bring the Galant. I'm going to try to put the radiator in this week. I should be able to do that. And then. Excellent. Uh, the Montero, because I haven't driven it in a while. And Marco likes cars. it. So you can ride in the Montero. Excellent. So is Stephanie driving or your dad? Uh, I think Stephanie will drive the Montero. Okay. With Marco. And then uh, my dad can probably ride with me. Excellent. Well, I'm sure my dad will be there as well. And uh, I know Jordan will be there with his pickup truck I think he's taking. And yeah, the Datsun I think pickup. Chris is bringing his repo. Yeah, Chris wasn't sure exactly what he was going to bring, but he'll bring something. Yeah, and Scott is bringing the Isuzu. Yep. So most of the end, I assume. Well, I don't know if Steve's going, but if he is, he'll take his Miata. I'm sure. So we saw a guy with a Mazda Boingo. Boingo uh, or Bongo? Bongo. Bongo is no I. It's B O N G O. All right, Bong- and Bongo was his name. Oh. 
Yeah, oh, that's, the bongo. Yeah, that's really neat. They're kind of like a Mazda Delica almost. And then it, come to find out, uh, Chris knows them. Right, because he who owns Weird Van knows everybody with Weird Van. Right. So, I don't know. Kind of how it works. I was like, <laughs> tell that guy to go to Japanese car day because he had local plates, like Rhode Island plates or something. So. Yep. Cool. Well, but, I think that's an episode, Andrew. Unless you get anything else to an add. Episode. Uh, yeah, we're doing that. So hit us up for the link to the Discord if you want to join. It's yep. free. Uh, events are free. If you don't want to put an app on your phone, you can use it on your computer. That's right. Uh, and you don't even have to, like, you can mute it and not have it give updates. You can just pop in when you want. You don't, sure. have to, you don't have to have it as a time waster. Nope. Or if you want a time waster, it's a perfect one. Yeah, because it's actually a, a pretty decent app. It's not like, uh, it's. I'm pretty sure the reason why a lot of people use it is because it's not like Facebook Messenger where it's all up in your business. Yeah, no, it's anonymous. Pretty, it's pretty pretty low key. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. Follow us on Instagram, Auto Off Topic. You can follow our, our Scale Autocast on Instagram. And me on Instagram. Race and Anger. anger. I couldn't remember. I was almost going to say your name. I got you. (laughs) No stress. Oh my God. What is my name? And uh, I'm also on Twitter as Race and Anger. And we have, I've been using the auto off topic Twitter a little more. I posted some of the pictures from the, the drive the other day. So you can go follow us on there. If you're on Twitter, Brad, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me as always at TSISS350 on Instagram. Yeah. And even though they're not going to hear that, I want to wish uh, all the people we know in the Rebel Rally good luck. Maybe they'll hear this episode afterwards. Right. I hope they're doing well. We and, gave you good uh, luck. It's currently happening right now. So, <laughs> yes, it is currently happening right now. And I know when it's over, we're going to talk to a couple of those teams. So yep. we'll hear about how it goes. Perfect. All right. Cool. As always, keep your cards analog and aim with the roses. Yeah.